this is the State Library here. Going west out Capitol Avenue was what's known as the, the Hartford Manufacturing District. It included Pratt & Whitney Machine Tool, Pope Manufacturing Company, and on the other side of the Park River down Woodbine Street was the Underwood Typewriter Company. And they were established here in Hartford in 1901 and lasted until about 1970 or 72 when the company had been sold and the buildings were, were torn down. At one point in the 1930s, they, the buildings of Underwood comprised about 23 acres of floor space. And they were making eight or 10 different brands of, of typewriter, including manuals as well as the electric typewriters. This is the, the number five machine, which was introduced in 1911. And that was, I think they sold a million, at least a million of those over the years. The Royal Company came to Hartford in 1908 and built their factory along New Park Avenue. Um, it ended roughly where I-84 crosses New Park. It was added on to 1911, 1917, 1926. To, it used to be called you know, like the, the castle on New Park Avenue just because of the, the architecture. It was empty by the 1980s and almost completely burned to the ground in 1992. You know, the building was demolished and it's now a big stop and shop shopping center. And the last vestige of typewriters in Hartford is the little typewriter logo on the stop and shop sign on New Park Avenue. Both Underwood and the Royal Company had fantastic advertising departments and they really pushed their products and they were competing with each other within you know, half a mile of each other. Um, both Underwood and Royal were attracted to Hartford because of the, it was a pre-existing uh, very high level of skilled uh, machinists and manufacturers and they were both brought here to take advantage of that and at their prime in the 40s and 50s they probably employed somewhere between five and seven thousand people apiece. And then during World War II both companies um, converted over entirely to wartime production. And they had the little parts they were making for various firearms and other war material, mostly carbine parts for the uh, M1 carbine in World War II. You want to see the typewriter first? I'll give you a better sense of what we're talking about. All down here, both sides of this aisle. And they were they were everywhere, you know, every all over the world. They were both companies were making typewriters with keyboards with uh, Chinese characters, Japanese characters, and I mean that just opened up whole new markets overseas for them. And unfortunately it might have, you know, helped cause their demise by people realizing, well, you know, we could make these here, you know, it's the same story, make them here cheaper. personal favorites, if I may. It's a Royal Portable Typewriter. They first introduced these in 1926. And uh, again, it was the marketing that uh, made a big difference, too. When I-84 came through the city, out, out Capitol Avenue, most of the factories were just demolished to make way for the highway. So you know, for 30 or 40 years, nobody's really known. And most of the people that worked in the factories have probably passed on. I don't know, I mean, the, you know, the people move to the suburbs and they just, you know, they just don't think about Hartford and what it, what it once was and what it meant, you know, to the United States as a, as a manufacturing center. I think Hartford was probably the, the American city with the manufactured the most typewriters. There were just millions and millions of typewriters coming out of Hartford for 60, 70 years.